All right. I, I see a ton of problems here. And, and it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, no, Mother, Mother Nature is saying, Bill, you fucked up. I got to take this tree out just to fix things and make things right. Right. And so, um, first of all, tell me about the white stuff right there. I know what it is, but I want to hear a, I want to get a verbal representation into the podcast. Why do I have a feeling I'm about to be a punching bag here? But that's okay. For the sake of the uh, podcast audience out there, so this is a tree that we kind of, you know, planted and forgot about, more or less, uh, other than when you walk by and grab a cherry. But what Paul's talking about is there is a, a white uh, trunk protect, protector, um, which actually came with the tree when we bought it. And because we're not up here all the time, um, you know, it just got left on there. And the tree trunk is actually outgrown and it's actually splitting open and has split open. Um, on top of that, I know from talking to several people that although they put these white trunk uh, protectors on to kind of protect uh, the trunk from getting scorched in the winter, when the sun hits one side of the snow and reflects off and can burn one side of the trunk and not the other, um, on the other hand, we shouldn't leave it on all the time because uh, I've heard it can provide kind of a moist environment for bugs and so forth. So bottom line is the, the obvious thing is that the tree has outgrown the trunk protector. Um, it almost looks like there might even be a little bit of bark damage right there, trunk damage. Um, and uh, from, from the protector. That's right. The, the protector's yeah. fucking up the tree. Uh, yeah, and you, and you look at that. We're, we're I mean, it's not fucking it up a lot, but it's fucking it up a little. Yeah, yeah it definitely is a lot to be desired. And you can tell, actually, where the trunk has been. It's starting to split apart now. The bark looks the worst right there. And then up here where the trunk is not, or you know, down here, it actually looks a lot better. So, um, now, so that should be my first clue. That, uh, I suppose when it started, all of the trunk protector was probably uh, within 12 inches of the soil. Yes. How, how high up is that? That one piece there. <laughs> well, this piece is probably four feet or so, uh, or more, four and a half feet or something. Yeah, four and a half feet is what I would go with. Yeah. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've been uh, embarrassingly negligent of this tree, I guess you could the, say. I think that the important point I want to stress here mm -hmm. is uh, the tree protector is fucking up the tree. That's, yeah. that's, that, uh, that can't be emphasized enough. <laughs> I mean, it's not like killing the tree, but it's it's making the tree sad. Yeah, yeah. So, and basically, once you start to make the tree sad, then the tree kind of goes, <laughs> which, which is the call for the worms. It, it, it's the dinner bell yeah. for all kinds of bugs and funguses. It's like once the tree starts to kind of get a little sad, everything else is like it's it's time to chow down. Let's move in and take this thing out. That's their job. This is their job to notice when a tree is in stress. Right. And it's it's the end of the tree's life cycle. Nature breaks it down and starts to do its work. So uh, I guess it's safe to say then that uh, our neglect of this tree is, uh, you know, is basically invited the worms and, and the worms just didn't show for no reason. The tree, to use a human analogy, the tree's immune system, for lack of a better word, would, would be better if I had so done your, a job. So your first thought, which I think is a normal human thought, mm -hmm. is um, it's got worms. I want those worms to fucking die and I will kill them. I'm going to get little teeny tiny machine guns and I'm going to sit out here and shoot all the little fucking worms because I hate them so and they're my enemy but actually you know the worms are trying to help you out man they are and yeah oh yeah yeah they you, me clue, you made a mistake they're trying to erase your mistake I see I all right see. okay they're, they're trying to cover for you look I Bill see. I know you're not around I'm going to try and cover for you yeah but don't worry I'll take this out <laughs> and then and then nobody will know all right you you could you could call it a fluke, whatever you want. All right, now, now let's, let's, let's where where are how far out do the roots extend from this tree? Um, well, I don't know because they're under. Okay, but I'm all right. Okay, that's called the drip line. Okay. We call that the drip line. Drip all right, line. Yeah. here's here. Let me show you. The roots come out to about here. Really? All right, yeah. Awesome. The roots for that cherry. So we're we're standing about three or four times past the drip line on this tree. Now another thing is 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 uh, what's the general shape of this tree? Uh, lollipop. Lollipop tree. We got a lollipop on our hands, folks. <laughs> so um, all right, we got a lollipop tree, and it's got like five feet of trunk before it just has a shrub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so basically when the leaves come out, it's got, a, it's, it's got to come up with enough sugar to support all that trunk. Right. And, uh, and now let's, let's talk 
about like uh, okay, so we're we're standing over the roots here. Here we're standing over the roots. So like um, when the when the roots are out there and they're enjoying life, what what's out there enjoying life with those roots? Uh, grass and a lot of it. What else? Um, well. Okay, here, let me help you out. Not much fucking else. Yeah, there's no policy. I, I am not seeing a dandelion. I'm not seeing any other plant in this grass. Why is that, Bill? Well, there's no guild. Obviously, the uh, the grass is taken over. There's no other supporting or companion plants to help support the tree and provide oh. a symbiotic environment. I'm, I'm a little more worried than that, Bill. Why is there not a dandelion right here? Why, why is it in all of this lawn I don't see a single dandelion? Now, at, at, earlier today, I'm just a few miles down the road, there's dandelions everywhere. Yeah. They've got dandelions. They've got knapweed. they got they got oh, a gob of the species with the grass. You know what? I think that uh, my mom did have this spray for knapweed a while ago because we had a big knapweed problem. And, of course, this was a couple years ago before I had heard the word permaculture and knew anything about, you know. Okay. So I think that's probably why. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. So then that spray, it's a, that's a, that kills broadleaf plants, right? That's a broadleaf. Because the idea is it kills the broadleaves yep. and then it leaves the grasses. Right. 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 Okay. Would you call a cherry tree a grass? No, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> so what do you suppose is going to happen when you spray it with herbicides? This is like the Socratic method of... This is, what do you this know? Is, I'm, you're suffering, aren't you? You're suffering. <laughs> but you ask. No, I... You ask me the questions <laughs> and I keep telling people, you don't want me to come and tell you. And then I... It's like, okay, well, what did you think was going to happen? Oh, it's true. It's true. And it's, see, it's magnified by the fact that, you know, maybe if I spent more time up here, I would notice some of these patterns. But, you know, we're here and then we're gone. And so Ooh, I just had a really important thought. What's up? Are you still going to buy me dinner? Uh, I don't know. That's how bad. <laughs> that's how long this goes on. How, how bad is Because I got podcast. more. <laughs> I got lots more. Uh, you want to keep going or, or do you want to you leave it here? Listen, I, I, I need to humble myself and realize that, you know, the, the truth is uh, we have to know the truth even if the truth makes us uncomfortable so the truth is is that you're pointing out some obvious flaws in uh, how I've cared for this tree so no please continue okay. I'm going to be a punching bag to solve the problem and save all right here it comes here comes the next one all right Napweed. Now, here's the thing. Cut me, Nick. Here's, here's the thing. When people say, oh, look at that napweed there. I better spray yeah. the napweed. Yeah. And then and then here comes the people are like, oh, hey, let me tell you. I got an herbicide here that's way better than those other herbicides. You don't want to spend your money on that. I got an herbicide. You spray it. It lasts like five or six years. I mean, you don't have to spray it. Ain't that a deal? Don't you want some of that? <laughs> Uh, you know, and again, I'm not even 100 percent sure my mom uh, had ordered that, but I, I thought she had because some of the neighbors okay. had napweed issues. So all you gotta do is look at the ground and know that something was ordered. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's I mean, it's a nice there's lawn. only grass here. Yeah, it's nice lawn. It's nice right. lawn as a monocrop goes. Right. So um, now, all right. So here's the, I mean, there's the thing. Yeah. Do you think your mom sprayed two years ago, or did she spray last year? Probably two years ago, I think it was. I, I, so then, uh, I guess, I'm not even 100 percent sure. I thought I remember her saying something about that. She was and even my mom was uncomfortable with it, but all the so-called experts said, right. you know, yeah, because my right. mom was an organic farmer growing up, and I think since she figured oh. this is, you know, lawn, <laughs> and we're going to plant on the perimeter, okay. Right. I don't know how many places I've been where they swear by organic. They're passionate about organic. They're bonkers about organic. They want to kill anybody who doesn't organic. Yeah. And then you ask them about what they've done themselves, and it's like, I am, of course, absolutely organic, except, of course, when I spray stuff. For now, for you. Like herbicides and pesticides. Oh, I'm, I am organic. Organic to the core, except when there's those hornets over there, and I get that stuff, that raid, <laughs> spray them, and it's like I am, I am totally organic, except except for that time though, that hawkweed was there, and uh, and I just didn't know what else to fucking do, so I just sprayed it, yeah. and so I mean that's like, uh, but I'm I am organic, I swear, organic to the core, and it's and it's like these, uh, yeah, oh, and I think I think like you know a lot of people, it's like okay, they they did know what organic was, and then it's like you know what, I just don't give any. I just don't care anymore. Right. 
It's like, you know, I just letting that go. But I do care, Bill. I do, 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 do. I'm here to care all over you until you weep. <laughs> I will care until you weep. <laughs> all right, so let's let's uh let's, so basically here's the deal. Mm -hmm. You you've got a persistent herbicide all over your property now and I know you are loving the permaculture. You are just you are about to bust. You are so excited about permaculture. Yeah. And now I'm here to bear the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> it could be hard. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have some challenges because you're going to try and plant stuff in this soil, and everything is going to die. Yeah. And so um, here's here's your cherry tree. It's like, uh, oh, what did you say your mom's two years ago? And it's like, damn, and last year this thing just put out shit cherries, and, and everything was miserable. The plant, the tree was miserable. It got all these worms and shit. And, and you know, when you spray it, what kind of death do you think these plants have? I mean, granted, most of them are compromised immediately, but a tree is a much bigger thing. With, so basically, it got hit with the herbicides, but it's like it didn't kill it. It wasn't enough to kill it because right. it's a bigger beast it's here. Tree, yeah. So, um, all right, so there's there's that. So is it, what can I do to remedy the herbicide situation? Is there anything I can do to kind of purify the ground once that stuff's been, that crap's been sprayed on there? I think you start with a lot of weeping, you yeah. know, just, just cry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.